Welcome to the Executive Protection and Secure Transportation Podcast. The podcast is provided by the International Security Driver Association. Every week, we share secure transportation and executive protection headlines, news, trends, and educational content for today's practitioners. Now, here's your host, Larry Snow. Hello, and welcome to episode 206 of the EPST podcast. Hope you're doing well. Let's get started. Facebook security spending is in the news again. Facebook parent company Meta spent $26.8 million on security and private jets for Mark Zuckerberg, according to their 2021 Security and Exchange Commission Schedule 14A filing. In the Security Exchange Commission report, it mentions that in 2021, approximately $15 million was spent for residential security and personal travel security pursuant to Mr. Zuckerberg's overall security program. Of importance to those who supply secure transportation services to the corporate and high net worth community is that a substantial portion of that $26.8 million, 57% to be exact, went to supplying residential and secure transportation services. And this is not new news. Corporate and high net worth sector of the market has been supplying these services to their executives for decades. What is new and noteworthy is that in the past three years, there has been a significant increase in corporate spending on residential and secure transportation. Looking backward from starting from last year back to 2018, the then Facebook and now Meta SEC filings reported that they spent again approximately over $15 million in 2021, over $13 million in 2020, and over $10 million in 2019, and close to $10 million in 2018, respectively, for costs related to personal security for Mr. Zuckerberg at his residences and during personal travel pursuant to Mr. Zuckerberg's overall security program. That is a 51.7% increase in cost from 2018 to 2021. Mark Zuckerberg is not the only meta executive that receives the benefit of residential security and secure transportation. Meta also spent close to $9 million in 2021 protecting COO Mrs. Sandberg while at home and while traveling. The approximate $9 million spent in 2021 represents a 17.5% increase from 2020, approximately a 100% increase from 2019, and an incredible 200% increase from 2018. The combined amount spent to protect Mr. Zuckerberg and Mrs. Sandberg while at the residence and secure transportation is approximately $24 million. But that's not the number that caught our attention. Since 2018, Facebook slash Meta has increased their spending on residence security and secure transportation by 87%. These numbers represent the corporate community. Hence, they represent the corporate sector of the profession, which we would agree is growing. But that does not mean that the other sectors of the profession are growing in the executive protection and secure transportation area. The International Security Driver Association analyzed the 2021 Facebook SEC 14A filing numbers and presented them in a different manner. We looked at the amount of money spent by Meta in the year 2021 and did some quick calculations as to how much was spent per hour per day on personal security for the Facebook executive. In the 2021 filings, if we assume a 365-day coverage, The $15-plus million for personal protection works out to over $41,000 a day, and if you use a 24-hour day, that works out to over $1,700 an hour. For those that write and post that the client will not spend the money for personal security, here's one company that spends over $41,000 a day to protect one executive. If you add the cost to protect Mrs. Sandberg, the cost moves up to close to $66,000 a day to protect two executives, and that amount is for residential security and secure transportation only. 
Meta spends more than half of its security budget and keeps its top two executives safe at home and when traveling. Like all decisions that corporations and high net worth individuals make, there is a logic behind their decisions to spend their money, including personal security. The logic behind Facebook spending 58% of its security budget on residential security and secure transportation can be found in IRS Regulation 132. We suggest that those professionals involved in secure transportation get a firm understanding of this regulation. An excellent place to start would be reading Chapter 12, page 136 of Joe Atera's book, The Professional Guide to Planning, Managing, and Providing Secure Transportation. And we'll have a link to that book in our show notes. In 2021, we analyzed the 2020 SEC filings for six Fortune 100 companies and came up with the total spending of a little over $21 million on personal security, which works out to over $57,000 a day and over $2,400 an hour in a 24-hour time frame. The six-company sample showed an increase of a whopping 64% from 2018 to 2020 and 42% from 2019 to 2020. As with Meta, these six companies spend a majority of their security budget on residential security and secure transportation. As with Meta, the catalyst for these companies was the IRS Regulation 132. The result of our research is that the corporate community spends a considerable amount of money on residential security and secure transportation. Executive protection and secure transportation has, and in our opinion, will always be their business model. And it has been that way for decades. Also, history shows that secure transportation is where they spend a majority of their training dollars. If you by chance review the IRS code, you will find that protective driver training is the only skill that the IRS requires. There's no mention of executive protection training, shooting, or martial arts, just protective driver training. The fact that the IRS singles out protected driver training is called a clue. In our opinion, those who do not heed that clue are clueless. The purpose of collecting this data is to point out that a business model has been in place and used by the corporate and high net worth community for decades. This model explains the financial decision-making process used to determine their security and training budget. We point this out because there seems to be an abundance of social media posts that mention that the market does not want to pay for good security. That may be true in the subcontractor or the sub-sub-subcontractor sector of the market. Unfortunately, there are no metrics that supply data and numbers covering that sector of the market. So the next question that needs to be answered is, high net worth individuals are spending this amount of money on personal security. What are the qualifications to work in this sector? Or what are the experience, skills, and knowledge those hired to supply these services must possess? Always keeping in mind that it is the client who decides the experience, skills, and knowledge, or ESK for short, that you need to work for them, not the training providers or the latest EP Secure Transportation Guru. We mention this due to some of the comments we see again on social media. These comments question the corporation's hiring practices, going as far as to say that they don't know what they're doing when it comes to executive protection and secure transportation. Since our history working in this sector of the profession goes back to the mid-1970s, We can say with a great deal of confidence that these companies have been hiring executive protection and secure transportation providers for decades. They know what works and more important, what does not work. As with any business, they look for practitioners and service providers that have the experience, skills, and knowledge that meets their requirements. It is imperative that we mention the following. Security driving and executive protection 
are not marketing terms. They are a statement of skill. We are approaching 50 years in the profession, and it is astonishing the number of training providers who dismiss this sector of the profession. History has shown that the path to higher wages is to gain an understanding of the experience, skills, and knowledge needed by the RHC. The RHC is defined as the person's name in the right-hand corner of the check. Keep in mind that the RHC is the person that gives you money. Training providers are the people that take your money. Listen to the person that gives you money. Ensure that those that take your money are supplying the right ESK, experience, skills, and knowledge, that those who will give you money are willing to pay for. There are training providers out there that meet that criteria. What are the ESKs this sector of the market is looking for? To answer that question, a few years back, we, the International Security Driver Association, used ZipRecruiter and Indeed to research the job market. We came up with data that clearly indicated that there is a skills gap that is preventing many practitioners from reaching their maximum earning potential. A skills gap is defined as the difference between what the market wants and what is available for skill. This is a common problem in all industries. In an attempt to better understand the skills gap that exists in the executive protection and secure transportation profession, we researched the job market. Our goal was to data mine the skills, education, and or training and experience that are the most sought after by the executive protection and secure transportation job market. The data was acquired by reviewing job offers from 60 companies that represent various industries. The data collected represents full-time employment job offers only. The following is an outline of the results. The experience portion of the Experience Skills and Knowledge ESK The average experience required was five years. 99.93% of the companies required experience. The years of experience range from no experience required to 15 years of experience required. The type of experience varied in accordance with the position. This should be no surprise. Common sense dictates that you need the experience to get the work in this sector or, for that matter, any sector of the security profession. It is unfathomable to think that a director of security for a corporation or high net worth individual would hire an inexperienced individual. The type of experience most often required was a combination of LEO, military, and or combinations of both. They represented close to 50% of the type of experience required. Additionally, our research found that by far the most sought after education was a college degree. Additionally, our research found by far the most sought after education was a college degree at 40.7%. This was the most sought after requirement other than experience. There should be no surprise. All higher level positions require a college education. We strongly suggest that those who will be using their GI Bill for education consider a college degree. What we found interesting was that most of the job descriptions did not specify what type of degree. As we come to the end of this podcast episode, we want to remind our listeners of an undeniable fact that many seem to overlook. You or your company are a business. Whether you are relatively new or have been in the profession for some time, whether you are a sole practitioner looking for the next job, a security provider looking for the next customer or client, or a trainer looking for the next student, you or your company are a business. And as a business, you operate within a business model. Your business model governs your future in the profession. Noted business author Peter Drucker defines a business model as the answer to these questions. Who is your customer? What does that customer or client value? And how do you deliver value at an appropriate cost? 
It does not get more complicated than that. We suggest you sit with pen in hand and write your business model. Do not allow a training provider to set the foundation for your model. Who is your customer? If you are new to the profession, that question would be, what sector of the protection market will I concentrate on? For those that are new, we recommend reading Chuck Randolph's article on the five slices of the protection business. What does the customer or client value? Devote time to learning to answer this question. Research executive protection or secure transportation job listings. Examine what the market wants. What is the experience? What is the knowledge? And what are the skills required? How do you deliver value at an appropriate cost? This may be the hardest question to answer, but invest the time to get the answer. Do not subscribe to the social media theory that clients will not pay for exceptional service. Also, if you are supplying secure transportation services to the corporate sector, we suggest you look into a company security exchange commission, Schedule 14A, as we depicted in the beginning of this podcast episode. Finding opportunities. If you're looking for job opportunities, whether to get your foot in the door or take your career to the next level, the only person who can find that right opportunity for you is you. You understand better than anyone your experience level and skill set, your desired market your and location, and most importantly, the position you want and the companies you hope to work with. You must do the research. Who is doing what and where? What qualifications do employers and hiring managers look for? What skills are most sought after? What are the needs of the industry? And before going on a job hunt, you have to answer these questions. What do I do? What qualifies me to do it? And who have I done it for? Before answering these questions, we suggest you read a poem. It's called The Man in the Mirror and answer these three questions honestly and from your heart. Don't cheat yourself or the man in the glass. That'll do it for me this week. Thanks so much for listening. Links to all the news stories we mentioned in this episode are available at securitydriver.com. We welcome any comments, feedback on the podcast or topics that were discussed. If you have an interest in going much deeper into these types of topics, I invite you to check out the International Security Driver Association's website and consider joining the only organization dedicated to supporting the advancement of professional security drivers and other protection practitioners with data-driven research and other professional development tools. For more information on all of the member benefits, head on over to isdacenter.org.